Welcome to the 82nd episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome returning friends. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could join us. Today on our podcast, we're going to continue to talk about what Colleen's been knitting. We're also going to talk about other crafts that we've been doing. But before we start all that, Colleen's going to talk about what we're wearing. And I'm so excited. So <laughs> if you take a look at me. <laughs> what this is, is the Cozy Knit Vest from Mary Maxim. So it was a kit, and the yarn is the Mary Maxim Cloud Spun. So it's 100% acrylic. It's super bulky weight yarn, so it knits up quickly. And I have to tell you, it's very warm because I've put this on, you know, before we did the podcast, and I'm thinking, why am I so sweaty and not warm? Exactly. And it's really warm. But oh, it, I like it, and it fits great. It does. So yeah. we, so I did us. We measured, did a swatch, kind of tried it on a few times on the way there, and it, it looks nice. fantastic. It. Thank you it so much. It looks really, really good. And so, it wasn't too expensive. Like it's the yarn no, is not an expensive kind wasn't. of yarn. It wasn't. And if you just keep an eye out on Mary Maxim, just watch for their kits because sometimes their kits are on sale. Sometimes they have free shipping. Sometimes they have shipping for seventeen cents. They do all kinds of interesting things. So just keep an eye. Sometimes you sign up for their newsletter, and then you'll get emails, and it'll let you know what's going well, on. Well, turned out great. I love the color. I'm glad you picked that color. Yes, it does. It looks really good. So Thank I you. was trying to color coordinate. So what I'm wearing is the Hitchhiker, and that's by Martina Bem. And there are a lot of these. If you go under Ravelry and look at all the projects, there's. I don't know. There will be a lot of them because so it's a nice. So did you plan this? I did. Well, you did I knew what job. you were wearing, and yeah, I thought, well, that's a good we match. Be matched. It is now, a good match. Now, do you match. always do that, or is it just a coincidence sometimes? Um, most often, you, I you do that. It? Huh. I do that, and uh, usually I'll say, "What do you want to wear?" Or I'll have something for you to wear, and then I try to color coordinate. We mm -hmm. don't want to be too clashy. No. <laughs> so this pattern is done using one skein of fingering weight yarn. But I had a party of five, and it's a uh, Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock, and it's It turned lovely. out great. I'm, you just kind of knit mm -hmm. up to the point, and then you add the new color it's in. It's beautiful. And you do Thank Colors you. Colors are great on you, too. Thank really you so nice. much. Yeah, yeah. I like it. So I'm really, really happy with that. So that's what we're wearing, and next we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object is the Cape Cod Hat. And that's by K.F. Jones of the Bakery Bears. And I used the Malabrigo Rasta, which is amazing. And the nice thing about the pattern is it uses basically all the skeins. So one skein will do it. And I'm really, really happy with it. I'm going to put a pom-pom up, but I have, didn't have time just to do some juggling. I have a few pom-poms that I might give it a try. And then we'll see what size of pom pom, what color of pom pom. This and we'll feels like it'll be really warm. It's so thick. I think it will be really, really. Is that warm. the yarn that makes it thick, or how it is? That it? yarn is super thick, and it's mm. beautiful. It's a super bulky yarn. Nice, very, and I really like very it. soft. So the nice thing is, when I was making May's vest, there was yarn left. So lo and behold, I made her one of the Cape Cod hats out of the yarn that her vest is out of. It's a match. It's a match, there you go. So once again, we'll decide on pom-poms. I'm not sure if you're a pom-pom person or not, but we'll give it a try and see what you think. Yes, and I don't want to display this right now because I don't want to mess my lovely hair. Do no, we don't want to do that. No. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's really nice, it'll be a nice match. Yeah. And they knit up so quickly. So if you're thinking that, um, now I know this pattern is one of their um, platinum patterns. But my suggestion is if you want to try and get a head start on knitting for Christmas, find yourself a bulky, super bulky pattern, hat pattern, and just make them. They knit up very quickly, and then you can just kind of stock them away and have all those presents ready to go when Good idea. it gets time. So that's that. Now, my next finished object is the Shalola, and that's by Laura Nelkin. So it has a few little beads in it. And I used the Heritage Wave in the woodsy colorway. And the idea was we would give one to each of the mothers for Mother's Day, but then when it was kind of gray and gloomy, I thought we'll just give it to them a little earlier. And so May's mom got that Shalola and it's beautiful on her. And she loved it. And yeah. She looks great in it. Yeah. So that's that. So that's that one. 
Now, my next finished object has taken some time, and that is the Tuesday Lunchtime Shawl by um, Kate Atherley. And the yarn that I used, oh my goodness, if you get a chance to use this, if you get some special present and you want to do that, it's beautiful. It says a luxurious blend of cashmere, camel, silk, and baby alpaca. It is absolutely gorgeous. And here it is. And this is all blocked. And it's all blocked. So it opened up. Wow. This I is am gorgeous. so happy with it. So it, I used three balls to get this, this size. Now, once again, once I opened it up, because these are all, they're basically like little cable stitches that you do. Right. I know we talk about blocking all the time on this yes, because yes, you're yes. the blocking queen. Yes. But I really like how it makes the lines straight. When exactly. You like they don't go all no, that wavy stuff does. sometimes. So yeah, I'm nice. really, really happy with it. So not that I want there to be cold weather, but there's a little bit of snow going on today. So maybe <laughs> I can wrap that around. But my it's neck getting better. It. We're just it saying is. we That's want right. spring to be here. You know what I should do? What? I should make some kind of shawl that is that camping shawl. So that yeah. it's just for camping. camping so that when it gets smelling like fire, fire, <laughs> wood smoke, that <laughs> that's, that's a great just idea. And you can put it maybe idea. in a bag or something. Yeah. That's a really good idea. You could, you, could make the, you could make it maybe camouflage colors. <laughs> Am I okay. getting too crazy? She just went one <laughs> step too far. <laughs> But that's okay. <laughs> no, that's a great idea because really, when you if you camp, can you imagine the smell on this if you oh, had a campfire? No, no, no. Because we have some coats that we wear on the campfire, exactly. and I leave them in the garage in the winter because they just smell so bad. They you can't do. really get that smell. You appreciate coat. it while you're sitting at the fire campfire, but you don't appreciate after. Yeah. There you go. So my last um, finished object is the hope hat. And that was by River City Yarns, um, and it was a free pattern, and they suggested that you donate to the Canadian Red Cross. And it was also, I used the numbers from the pattern called the um, Classic Knit Hat by Little Grey Heart. So I want to make sure I label both. So when you saw it last, I hadn't finished everything and there it is with its I little like loop it. on the top i like that so loop. it doesn't need a pom-pom because it's got the little loop and i love that it's you know uh the ukrainian colors so you yes. can kind of say you know we're with you and, and support uh, support absolutely support so great job on that yeah, love go. those colors too yeah me too yeah, yeah the colors really worked out well nice okay very nice so yeah. that's my finished objects oh i didn't mention oh. and the yarn that i used is the bernat premium and it's lovely to work with. So it's 100% acrylic, so it'll be easy to take care of. Right, and there this made me think of politics and the world right. and everything else. And I don't follow American politics. I don't really know anything about it. Yeah. But um, there is a lady, a judge. I don't know what her name is, but she's going to be uh, the judge, a Supreme Court judge in America. Right. And I think one of the questions they asked her, I don't know how I even knew this. I think it was on Yahoo or something. Yep. One of the questions they asked her was... Um, what do you do in your, you know, your spare time and that. And to and work it, on your creative side. And work on your creative side. And yeah. she said she took up knitting and she crocheted. And, you know, I listened to a few other things when I was yeah. in there. What a smart lady. She's a brilliant lady. Brilliant. And what I really liked is that she said that she had a basement full of yarn. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It made you feel like, good, good, good. I could do that. Yeah, and, Supreme and, Court judge. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> You're a Supreme Court judge and you can do it. But, you know, what? I'm listening to this lady. What is she? Like, she's the perfect person. Person. like For she's done time. so much to society in her yeah. life yeah. and contributed to the what a good character person exactly. she was absolutely. and she's an inner absolutely go figure so. so that's my finished objects and may what about you finished objects well, i can talk about that in my little craft section if you don't mind okay no problem next we're going to talk about works in progress My first work in progress is a cowl to go with the hat, the hope hat in the Ukrainian colors. So this is the Hawthorne cowl and it's by Anna Campos. This is a free pattern and it is once again in the Bernat Premium. Lovely yarn to work with. And here it is. It looks like it would be warm too. I think so. It is. Oh yes, yeah, very thick. Yeah, it's nice and thick. Nice. And I'm really happy how it's doing. I took a class that was about brioche and how to fix your mistakes. And it, 
I allowed myself, initially I was starting this because I was gonna have this to take to the class so I could try and fix mistakes. And then I was knitting and I thought, no, this is too nice, I don't wanna make mistakes. <laughs> so I ended up knitting another swatch so that I could do that, but I'm really happy with that. So on this Can you thumb, wear it inside and it? Like you can. You can. Yeah, can wear absolutely. it with the yellow on, on the outside. Yeah, on the outside absolutely. And, or wear it that way, that's exactly. cool. Exactly, I'm really, really happy That'd with it. Nice so I'm bring, just yeah. about done, because if it's too much, it'll yeah. kind of cover you up. So oh, I, I'm goodness. really, really happy with that. Nice. Yeah, the pattern is great, explains what you need to do. So it's really, really good. Now, my second work in progress is the Anguli cowl. And this is basically May's birthday cowl. Um, not your birthday suit, but your birthday <laughs> cowl. <laughs> and um, just so that I remind you, this is the first one that I ever made for you. And I said, I want to make you something. She goes, I don't want too much. And I said, it's okay. Trust me, trust me. This is Bernat Comfort Sock. And it's really nice and soft. And it's acrylic and fits you really, really well. So do you have yeah. the pattern? Does it come as a pattern? Does it um, come just like this? This pattern, as it is, then you need two colors and you need to put the stripes in. And this is as is, like as the pattern. Is. It yep. turned out, it's a nice pattern then? Yep, absolutely. I love the pattern. I've made you a whole lot of them. Really nice. So I just wanted you to know, I think you get to be a little braver as you start just tweaking patterns and changing them up. So at some point in time, I really want to design something. How long have I been saying that to you? I know. You a should just time. go put your big toe in or forget <laughs> that. Just go for it. I think it. you kind of just have to jump because in all the way. Because you can nip, rip it out. Yes, can't you? that's the nice thing. Uh, you know, it's so, different than cutting fabric. At least you can just rip but it But that's out. what we found out about each other, and we've talked about this before. Yeah. You hesitate to do things. Yes. You're so uh, perfectionist. Yes. You don't want to make a mistake. You haven't even started yet. Me? I go right in there, make all kinds of mistakes, and that's how you learn. That is how you learn. That's how I learn. That's right. But if you were to, to design a pattern, you would learn what not to do too sometimes. That's true too. And so you, you need say, to go you can, for it. You can, okay. You can go do it. Go for it. All right. So back to May's birthday. So this was the self-strafing sock set by Polka Dot Creek. And why did I pick that for you? His name is Jesse, I bet name you. name is Jesse? Yes, yep. Jesse. That was so, my grandmother's name. Exactly. So I just want to tell you what how this works. Okay. So this is it not put together. This is the bottom. So let me flip it over. And this is that. Okay. So you start knitting where this yellow piece of string is. And then you increase. And then you just keep increasing one side. And then you just start decreasing one side. And you're going to end up with sides that this side and the side that May's holding will join together. Now so we'll do this kind of thing. And exactly. Then, and then, and then you're like going to have your cowl. Nice. So I was totally aware that um, in the set, it's a 50 gram skein. And I thought, not sure I'm going to have enough, but I thought I'll just keep knitting and see. And I got to here and I needed to do maybe about five, six more rows. And I didn't have enough yarn. So the sock set itself came with pink. And I could have put it at the end. And we kind of talked about it back and forth. And then I went digging in my stash. And then we found this lovely navy blue. And because the last blue stripe is here, we thought that would be okay. And it's kind of going to ground it. So I've got lots to do. It's going to be not lots to do. I've got lots of yarn left. And so I just have to make that strip a little bit wider and then it will be ready to go. Now, Improvising, I call it. Exactly. Now, how but are you with all the colors? I love it. It's not, not anything I would have picked, but it, it turned out nice. It's gonna look I wouldn't even really put those colors together. I know. Would you, like nice? pink and yellow? And well, it's very funny because this is the second time I've bought yarn to make you a pair of socks and you keep saying, no, I want a cowl. I just want a cowl. <laughs> so a cowl it was. Nice, but it, but like I say, I wouldn't pick those colors, but I think they turned out to be. They're good. gonna. They look really yeah. nice. On so you. thank you for that. You're very welcome. I could see you wearing that underneath a jean jacket. Jean, ja jean jacket. It's yes, all so about the thinking, jean jacket. Yeah. That's true. All right, so that's that one. Oh, and I'm not sure I said Hillary Smith Callis is the designer of that. Now the other thing I thought was I took another class and it was called Holy Cables, um, H O L E Y, and it was by Romy Hill. And she had shown us some of the patterns that she did. And I kind I really liked this one. So you and I had watched Schitt's Creek and really enjoyed the show. And this is called the A Little Bit Alexis Cowl. 
I'm oh, a... if you know Alexis on um, Alexis, yeah. she talks like that. Alexis. <laughs> what else does mom. she say? Oh, this. She says, "Ew, Ew. David." That's what she says. Who's, Alexis. Who is Alexis? Is the mom? Is the daughter? Oh, I thought Alexis yeah. was the mom. Do you remember she goes in and she auditions for the musical and she sings a little bit of Alexis? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So Alexis is the daughter. Is the, the daughter. What's the mom? She talks like that. She yeah. says, Alexis. That's what she does. Can we do exactly. that? Alexis. <laughs> oh, if you haven't That's seen one. Schitt's Creek, oh my gosh, it is so funny. It's really, really we good We really show. got into watching it. Then we, we kind of did a marathon that we watched it. I could exactly. watch it all over again. Exactly. It was so funny. That's not a bad and idea, And basically the premise of this is that there's this really rich family and they uh, lose all their money and they have to go to this hotel into a little town called Schitt's Creek. Mm -hmm. S-C-H-I-T. Yeah, so, apostrophe S, yes. yep. And they have to go to this little town and live in this like kind of motel. And uh, their characters are pretty funny. Are pretty funny. Anyway, so it, that kind of made me giggle about that. So I had some <laughs> Barocco Comfort DK. <laughs> and this is where this came from. This... That's where she took the name from. Oh, yeah. a little bit of Lexus. Said, this is what it says. Just like its namesake character from Schitt's Creek, a little bit of Lexus has a simple top and a complicated underneath with interesting twists and turns that fit together perfectly. Yeah, that's perfect. So this is DK weight, which is why it's Comfort DK. And we talked about the fact that this is much too big for you. Yes. And so this is one of those things that there were cables, there were yarn overs there were all these things going on and i needed to make it smaller but make sure i used up most of the yarn so you've hacked this pattern i have hacked this pattern you've done so much hacking it like i said you could make your own pattern i think so now this will need to be blocked even love the colors not, on this one yes. this is more the colors that i would have picked yes so so far this is cowl number two there lots you of go. detail in this one lots and it what um romy hill explained in the class is if you're going to do uh, cables you want to have it being in a lighter a more solid color because it shows the cables up better. really yeah did you know that or I didn't but that's why I had three colors of this I had a navy and I had this blue and the white and so I you did the cable in the lighter color exactly and then just think. topped it off with the well thing. cool so this will it's on a very short needle so if we pull it out the stitches are all going to go but it's going to be good because this will block out there's some of those holy cables that she talked about yeah, so yeah, I'm really, really, really nice. thrilled with that. Yeah, really nice. And you exactly. learned something again. Now, Vogue Knitting Live has virtual classes. And I think what they're going to do, I'm not 100% sure. They had some in March. In April, there's actually a live Vogue Knitting Live that you can go to. I think it might be in Seattle. And then in May, they're going to have virtual classes. And I have to tell you, I have, throughout the pandemic, taken classes because Lots of time, it's the travel part that's so expensive, not the classes. Right. So I've been able to take classes from all kinds of people that live in all kinds of places and learn all kinds of things. And the really unfortunate didn't. thing about that is that we can't do it on the podcast because our podcast is The Adventures and we haven't really been doing The Adventures. I know. We really have to get back into doing that. Exactly. We love it. We miss it. Yeah. Um, things are opening up here. Yeah, um, exactly. We've... They've taken off mass mandates uh, mm -hmm. in Ontario, just right. so that you know that. Uh, they've taken off mass mandates, but when Colleen and I go out to uh, yarn stores or we go to fabric stores, yeah. like or we go out and you go to grocery stores, 98% of the people are still wearing masks still wearing because masks. I think it's still a recommendation from the health people exactly. that we still wear a mask. And yeah. we have... We wear them on so much. It's kind of weird going into a store and have, if you think without about it. taking without it. Yeah, exactly. And the people that don't wear a mask, it's no big deal. No, it's no big deal. Nobody says right? upset with them or anything exactly. like that. That's just your personal choice. Exactly. Um, but they're saying, you know, there's a whole bunch in Hong Kong, as you heard from your son. Oh, uh, new variant, I think. And there's a new, and in Scotland, there's a variant. Uh, so it's going to be coming this way possibly in the near future again yeah. and i just can't even imagine being locked down again <laughs> okay so we have to get our traveling in and what way we can we have to go right. on some little adventures so we can show you so yeah. we can be excited about and that we, we've been working on that yes we've been trying to schedule some trips yeah and um hopefully we can bring back a little bit of our adventures that will be fantastic yes all right i have one more work in progress and that is the otaski by laura nelkin now there are no beads in this one. <gasps> no, no beads? beads. Laura no. Nelkin, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> now, I've changed things up because the kit came with the little bit of, you can see the gold in that picture, the little bit of gold colorway. Um, and 
So it's kind of like textured stitches, like a Gansey thing, but then it um, had the color work. Now the color work happens, you have to carry the yarn. It's inside, so you don't see it, but you have to carry the yarn a lot of the way through. And the colors that this one, this was one of the Lola's Choice kits, um, the color... Um, you didn't is, pick this color is what you're saying. No, it, there were four possible colors. You had said the gray would come. I was hoping the green would come. I love this color. It's not a problem. But what I'm going to tell you about the Lola's Choice kits are that um, if you get yarn that, you know, may not be the color for you, then you can always gift it to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got a sibling or your mom or right. somebody, you know, you know, somebody at work that you want to give a gift to, then you can always still do the project, still learn. And then if you decide, oh, I really liked how that went, I'm going to make one for myself. Right. Which I might do. You've got the pattern there. You've then. got the pattern. Exactly. In the color that you like. Exactly. And it's, it's not, not a bad color. Horrible. No. I mean, we had the conversation. It's not a it's bad okay. color, but it's, it's not, not something bad. that, again, that you would no, pick. No, no, no. I don't have a coat that that really right. blends yeah. with very easily. But nice. So nice anyway, so right it. now, it's an interesting construction. It is a paid-for pattern. But you go in the round, and then there are things that you're going to do, and then you join it up. And I don't know if you can see. There's a twist at the top. So once it's done, you'll get to see that, and um, we'll do that. This is one of those ones that are, is going to need some major blocking. So nice. Once again, the blocking word. There you go. And the yarn is Kelburn Woolens Camper. Hmm. There you go. Maybe this is to take for the fire. You know, Maybe, the campfire. Yeah. I don't know, but look. It's a little yarn. small for campfire. <laughs> Is it? I can't see that keeping me warm. Well, keep your ears warm. That's oh, okay. your whole idea. <laughs> I was thinking something you wrapped yes. when you were talking about well, it. Before I, wasn't I thinking was thinking that, that but then oh, I thought, okay. oh, if I need to keep my ears warm. Well, well, you could take that with something that wraps. Exactly. Absolutely. So those are my works in progress and me. Works in progress for you. Oh, I'm always doing a work in progress. I'm still working on my uh, little miniature kind of polymer clay things because mm -hmm. it was still too cold to go into the garage. Right. Um, I did try to attempt a little couch mm -hmm. um, when I got out there. One day I cut some wood, so right. maybe I'll show you that. Oh, that'd be um, great. And we can uh, talk about that a little bit, but it's just a prototype. It's not really finished. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So next we're going to talk about our crafting adventures. Well, Colleen, uh, and Craft Adventures, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? All right, let's talk about this. So my son moved into a house, and I wanted to take something as a housewarming gift. Because we're congratulating him because he bought the house. He didn't, exactly. He's not renting the house. He was no. able to buy the house, which is a big thing, and it's like... Exactly. Congratulations. So I only needed to ask him one question, what color is the kitchen? <laughs> so he said, it's gray, and it's going to stay that way for a while. Went, okay, good to go. So what I did was I picked up these... I like these myself, by the way. They're nice. They're beautiful oven mitts. They're silicone, so yeah, they're really, really nice. So. I could wear these out shoveling the snow for crying out loud. You could. They keep you warm. They're so good. Exactly. And they wouldn't get wet. No, I know. Anyway, I'm thinking that, that I may have to go back and <laughs> that yeah. I may have to go back and we have we have nice little oven mitts that we got from your sister. They're half this size, and right. just your hand fits in them. Yeah, I like them. I do too. I do too, but I've been known to burn my arms. So. Oh, have you? Yes. Yeah, you go in the oven way more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> that so is If you for need sure. some of these, you should get some That's of those. That's right. So I think gray oven mitts, first of all. Then I decided I would make them a couple of these. These are so handy. So we use these that. all the time. That's right. So what I did was I went to Walmart and bought a set of three uh, tea towels. And so this is just one tea towel cut in half. I did my little crochet thing that we've talked about before. And then there's two other tea towels. So I thought, well, that nice. is a good thing. Nice. And then I thought, well, guess what? I've got some gray of this. So I made one little dishcloth and then I thought we'd be a little fancy and make one that was some strips. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of a nice little that treat. That was a nice, we gave them other gifts too, but this exactly. is nice like something that you made in that. And what a nice housewarming gift for somebody. Well, you that's know? what I thought. And what it's just a lo lots of little things, but I think that those would all be very useful. Very useful and handy. And I'm sure a boy's not gonna go buy any of that stuff. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's that. Now, the other thing is, he has a dog. <sighs> so I was making a bandana and found this pattern. And if you're interested in seeing how I make these, just comment down below, let me know that, and then I'll show a separate video. Maybe we video. could do a separate 
thing video on how to do this that. because these are great. So what they are, I mean, lots of times when dogs go get their um, hair fur trimmed, then they get groomed. a bandana. They get groomed and they get, they get nice. groomed. Yeah. That's right. So sometimes they'll do that. But these ones are really neat construction because what they do is their collar fits through. Yep. And so they can do that. So I, once again, what size is the right size? I don't know. So this I is made kind of two. Small. This would be perfect, I think. I think so. So this anyway. Is, this so is the, for a small dog, mm -hmm. but it's so cute. I love the fabric they chose. This is some lovely Easter fabric. And it says, I woof you. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm going to take both. My son can decide which one. And then we've got a, a friend that um, has, a dog, has so. a dog and we'll do yeah. the other one. Now, I think those are beautiful. Yeah, I'm really yeah. happy with them. Yeah, those are great. And the fact that it goes around a collar, you don't have to tie it around the dog. Exactly. It's brilliant. It's just easy to slip on. Yeah. So as I mentioned, if you're interested, let us know. And then I will do a little video about how to do that. Right. And also, um, you made dog biscuits. Like I homemade did. dog biscuits. I did. So I found um, a recipe that's called peanut butter and pumpkin dog biscuits sounds strange but that's what it is so anyway and so i followed the pattern no, at the pattern <laughs> yeah i'm such a she knitted she knit dog biscuits <laughs> she's talking in she's talking in, in knit knitting. language exactly <laughs> i followed the recipe and the recipe was to make them into little pretzels so that's what i did and then when i the then we had seen them done where you sprinkle sesame seeds on them and then I was speaking to my son about it. Oh, no, the dog can't have sesame seeds. So as quickly as I could, I had to brush all the sesame seeds off these. But most dogs can eat sesame seeds. It's yep. just his particular dog has that. Isn't supposed to have. So that's okay. And then I found out that the pretzels were too big, and so we only needed little ones. So the next time I made them, then I just made little I just made little twists and cooked them that okay. way. This is exactly what I was talking about before. You know how you just made these things and yeah. what did you learn you learned no sesame seeds you learned to make them smaller yeah and that's how you learn oh, like you're right voila <laughs> <laughs> she's just right yeah i love right. it when totally it all right. fits in exactly that's perfect <laughs> and now you know what to do for the next ones exactly so that is my crafting adventure and me how about you well i've been up to um oh you made this little thing for a couch too that's I one of your crafts did. I, did. Um, I asked colleen to uh, maybe i'm making a little i plan on making furniture mm -hmm. and i asked colleen if she could make some little um what would you call it a little throw for the couch an afghan yeah. an afghan yep. for the couch or mm -hmm. couches and that and right. you said you had some extra yarn so you yeah. kind of put this together exactly. which was really cute exactly so what i did was i took a pattern that was super for super bulky yarn um, and it was like a ripple afghan. And I went, okay, I don't need all that many stitches. I'm going to use fingering weight yarn. And so it ends up being this little thing. Right. And we do, like I do the 1 to 12 scale and you did something to make it yes. the one that size. I did all the calculations. Yeah. So it was great. Exactly. So thank you for that. So You're I'm welcome. expecting more of these for, oh, to sell. So I, I can have sell them do. on the little thing. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So thank you. So um, what I did was I'm trying to come up with a couch. Um, because I have this, I have this wood that looks like this. Okay. It comes like this. And I have lots of it. Okay. And I thought I really want to use up the wood that I have before I start buying other wood. So I'm trying to come up with a design on a couch that would actually use that wood. Right. So I came up. This isn't finished, by the way. Um, it needs some cushions on here, and I would paint the legs dark. Okay. And um, this this went really nice with it. Maybe a couple of little pillows. Look at that. But this is a prototype, and right. what I and I'm gonna I'm learning how to upholster stuff right. I haven't got it down yet as you can see but a lot of times people will use this stuff called bunka and it covers your work kind of right thing. um okay. I want to be able to get better at upholstering stuff I'm okay. not really good at that um but the actual framework and mm -hmm. that using that kind of wood that I have right. I'm going to be able to use that up and, and have a little miniature miniature couch so perfect yeah i'm going to be uh excited to learn more exactly. about posting. somebody said that one lady that does this professionally i was reading in one of the magazines that she was an upholsterer okay and um her stuff is like amazing oh, okay. but she learned from how to do the big stuff and just did it in miniature exactly but i would it imagine a real it's craft. a lot harder to do in miniature i would think it's a real craft to being able to do that so. exactly yeah so that is one of the things I've been working on and trying to think it through and how I'm right, going to do that. Right. And then um, some people had asked me if I could show them how I make some of my polymer clay things. So right. I may put in a video here mm -hmm. on how I make my little tomatoes. Right. Oh, this is so cute. 
Oh my, my bread. Gosh. Now, last week I showed you how I made my miniature knives. Right, absolutely. And um, But that wasn't the polymer clay piece. Right. But now I'll show you how I make my tomatoes and my bread. It is um, amazing. I may put, them, put the video in here, like I said, or I may show it in a separate video. Uh, okay. Now, I don't know if you know this, but um, there's a tomato one. What they do in a tomato one, and I don't have the skill set to do this, or the patience, <laughs> to be honest. What they do is they have things called, when you do polymer clay, they're called canes. Right. So when you make up canes, you can make flowers and, oh, okay. and different things with different canes. Okay. And if you, you YouTube polymer clay canes for right. tomatoes, you can see how they do that. It's very okay. detailed. They use a lot of colors. It ends up looking very good at the end of the day. Right. Um, like I said, I don't have the patience. So I did it very differently, and um, that was how it turns out. But yeah, it's a little tiny. great. Yeah, and so I just put it all together with the knife and a little bit of fabric, and there we go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. If you think about where you started doing your miniature work. Yes. And where you are now. I've oh learned, my gosh. I'm learning so much, and yeah. it's a continue, continuation of learning. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right, so that's our craft adventure, and next we're going to talk about souvenirs. My souvenirs in this episode involve a lot of fabric. Um... It's usually yarn, it's usually kits, but this time it's fabric. Um, and I ordered some fabric from Joann's in the States. So there were some certain things, um, some interfacing that I have trouble finding here. And then sometimes if you're placing an order and you order enough, you get free shipping and it all works out. There's one thing that you should know is that they, Joann's never used to ship to the Canada. At all. And because of the pandemic or just over the pandemic, they shipping now so yeah, if absolutely if you live in Ontario and you want to get some fabric from yeah. jo Joanne's exactly. they do shipping and I know for the first year of the pandemic I would say to you oh man I just want to go to Joanne's I want to get the fabric and so now we can order fabric I find American uh, stores are more inexpensive I think than our fabric stores am I correct um sometimes mm, okay. yeah so it's it's a juggling thing like is there a good sale because we'll talk about the fabric land oh, right, sale. Right. So sometimes there's a good sale, sometimes that. Um, we have to remember in the States, it's yards and not meters. That's about three inches difference, which isn't that much. But it's it's a juggling act of what you want. And sometimes it is you just need, want that fabric right. and you can't find it anywhere else. So I was looking for some cute Easter dog kind of fabric. Well, first of all, I was getting the interfacing, which is kind of boring, but I got the interfacing. <laughs> then I thought, I'm just going to take a look at some fabric and try and get over that threshold to get free shipping. So that's when I found this fabric. Now, just so you know, at Joann's, when you order fabric, usually you have to buy at least two meters. Okay, so that's good to know as well. So I figured we know enough people with dogs, we can make right. those. Not now, problem. interfacing, it's kind of like fixing your furnace or putting in a pool. Uh, you know, okay. is the cut, you know what I'm saying here? No. Nope. If you had to buy interfacing or buy this, what would you prefer to buy? That. Right. Yes. So, would you rather fix the furnace or put it in a pool? Oh, I see. <laughs> yes, I know. I you understand. You see my analogy? Yeah, I do. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's not, it's, it's not fun when you have to explain it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know okay. where I'm going with that. Yes, I do now. You know, you don't want to fix your air conditioner. You'd rather buy a new couch kind of thing. Correct. Right. Something That's that right. you can see and enjoy. Right. You don't exactly. enjoy fixing the furnace or yes. the air conditioner. I don't really enjoy interfacing, but it's important <laughs> when you sew. So. Exactly. Okay. All right. So my second bit of fabric whoop, is this one. This is nice. I like that. Which is a bunch of purses, and I'm really happy with that. That should make some neat project bags. Yes, those, that will make nice project bags. Nice <laughs> color. I like that. Yeah, I like those colors. Now, this is called stained glass, and I thought that was kind of oh, cool, Oh, that's too. really nice. I really, I really well, like that What were you one. thinking on this one? A project bag? Too? Probably project bags. Yeah. Those colors are beautiful. Yeah, I'm really happy. I can see it. why they called that one stained glass. Exactly. Nice. So that's that. I love looking, I love looking at fabrics. I don't yeah. know what it is. I don't sew, I know. but I just love it. But you also are really good at selecting fabric. I am. Yes, you really are. Now, the funny thing is, let's talk about getting free shipping from Joanne's. So, you would think that it would all come in a big box. <laughs> One big box. <laughs> it didn't. So, some of it came in a big box. And some of it came in a, like, envelope that was all wrapped up. And then the third package came with only one bit of fabric in it 
and wait till I show you what they shipped. A bolt of cardboard. <laughs> they shipped that. <laughs> now I love this fabric. Oh my goodness. It was it's I really love really the beautiful. Colors. Yeah. Love it. So part of the reason why I ordered from Joanne's, they were having an amazing sale. Um there were extra coupons and so um I I did that. And some and of these things I can't find. Fashion, it did. It, it, it came all came quickly. what you ordered and it all came yeah. a good. They said it wasn't supposed to come till the beginning of April. Yeah, and here we here. are. Yeah. Yeah. So it turned was out really nice. nice. So I, I'm really, really happy with it. I don't think the same person packaged it up. <laughs> no, I don't. How do you do so, that? I don't know. I wonder if they have to come from different stores because not every Joanne oh, stores okay. has the same Maybe, thing. I yeah. don't know the answer to that. There is a third party that deals with all that yeah. shipping stuff. But wouldn't you have thought they would have taken it out of the box? Like You would think. Because it was as big as that is, is as big, big as, as the box, box was. was. Roger could have folded this up into something like this. Exactly. But you know what? We're, we're not in the business, I so I don't know. We're exactly. not in that. So. And then I thought, well, maybe it's just special fabric. But the thing itself <laughs> talks about Mickey Mouse. And <laughs> this is not Mickey Mouse. So I don't know. They just put it on the bolt, kept it nice whatever works all right so those are my souvenirs and may how about yourself i actually have souvenirs this time you i'm do. so excited exactly. um yes well i went to my friend miniature mark and um she had a book that i was rummaging through and i was into doing as you can see the bread and the tomatoes mm -hmm. and uh there was this book that she had um and it did all the kinds of baking stuff and tomatoes and right. how to do it in Paula McClay. And there's all instructions on how to do that. And exactly. How to, even how to make the stand and the crate. And oh, everything wow. And that. Yeah. Fantastic. So what I was hoping was that um, the tomatoes are cute to do. Yeah. Was that they would show me how to do the inside of a tomato. Because right. Because that's the more difficult, intricate right. part. And? And unfortunately, they did show you how to make a tomato, but they didn't show you the, the inside, inside of how to do the inside. They oh, just no. showed you how to make those... Um, stems which oh, i already good. had done oh okay. but i love the book still like right. look it gives you great ideas okay perfect and marg's was an older edition this is a newer edition right and um, i highly recommend this book if you're into um miniature polymer clay food it's, okay uh, good looks like there's good all kinds of different things and yeah stuff fruits there, so. and vegetables yeah. and meat and fish and yes bread and so uh, anyway stuff. that was a great i was so excited about that and we ordered it off uh amazon and yeah. it came Pretty quick. Pretty quick. So mm -hmm. then um, Fabricland had a phenomenal sale. Right. 70% um, off a lot of the fabrics. 70% mm -hmm. off. That's just amazing. And I do use, I don't sew, but I do use fabric in my right. miniatures. And sometimes I pick up fabric for Colleen to sew for my miniatures, like <laughs> sew pillows. Yep. And, but um, for the couch kind of thing, I would need fabric. Right. And when you're buying for miniatures, you have to keep in mind the pattern. You, you always have to have a small, tiny pattern. Exactly. So exactly. Um, I got some of the, You got some of this, too. I did. So we, I, we bought three meters of this, and I kept two and gave one to May because for hers, there's that couch isn't getting thrown in the wash. It's not right. like a project bag. So to keep the fabric as pristine as possible then she doesn't need to wash, to wash it. it right because there's not going to be any shrinkage and that kind of thing so. and there's no pattern on this so it's easier to match up this, exactly which is good. that's great and then colleen found this um it's got a small pattern and you could use this for pillows mm -hmm. or, um absolutely or maybe a bedspread or yep, something that has absolutely. a small pattern on it yeah Again, this was for this is nice. You probably can't see this, but it's got little little tiny light tri triangles in it, which yeah, is a nice, it's really nice, and that'll be nice for a couch too. Exactly. And then um, again, this would be nice uh, plain for a couch. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a navy. Yeah, very nice. And then I got a checkered one, which is a small check, which will be great for miniatures like if i did right. a tablecloth or a exactly. picnic basket yep, i would like to absolutely. try and do a picnic basket of some sort yeah out of my wood and then that's line great. it with that oh that's fantastic yeah. and as you can see i used red um kind of like this one only in red i on know my it looks yeah. really really good it yeah. makes all that little detail details. makes it look so realistic and that's the, the thing with miniatures it's just uh, the details i think exactly like, yeah and then i bought uh this is not for my miniatures this is for something <laughs> entirely work. different yeah um i bought some of this that i might be able to use up so i'm very happy with my finds and my souvenirs it was exactly. awesome so. so we do have a good time shopping sometimes yes. we, we try to get the best deals that we can so mm -hmm. thank you so much for watching if you like what you're seeing give us a thumbs up 
comment down below. Let us know crafts that you'd like to see, places you think we should visit, um, because we really do want to start we do want to get venturing out, there, out and venturing out there. We do have a couple of plans, a uh, trip plan before the next onset of the Omicron or the next variant, variant comes in. Exactly. We do have a couple of trips planned. Yes. Uh, train trip, uh, <laughs> hopefully maybe smaller ones like Toronto, maybe Niagara Falls, but there's not right. really any yarn stores around Niagara Falls, is there? Uh, there's one on the way. On, on uh, Hamilton or? Oh, actually, there's maybe two or three. <laughs> she so asked we, go, the we can take a detour, but yeah. when you actually go into Niagara Falls, which is very surprising, yeah. that they don't really have uh, yarn stores. No, I'll double check. I'll take In that whole again. area, like St. Yeah. Catharines, I don't know about that, but. Yeah, we'll take um, a look we always see. enjoy our trip to Niagara Falls, and we always enjoy our trips to Toronto, and then exactly. we'll kind of branch out from there. Maybe exactly. go north, Barrie, Collingwood. Ooh, she's got know. plans. And then we'll go maybe further east in this fall. Well, it all like it's really hard, as you know, mm -hmm. to plan trips with this uh, COVID. Like exactly. you know, we we've planned way before, yep. and we had to cancel. And we've lost money, mm -hmm. and so we don't want to plan now. And then right, so we're gonna exactly. have to just play it by ear and see exactly. How we're all right, we're not really play it by ear kind of people. No, we're not. <laughs> we're planners. <laughs> we're planners. But anyway, yeah. Thanks for watching, and until next time, you take care.